The preparation for government examinations has certainly become very competitive in today's world. Why is it that some of us are more successful than the others? Is it because of intellect? No, it is not. What is the core reason behind separation between the successful ones from the not so successful ones? I have created a four step classification of different attributes that stop us from becoming successful. The first classification belongs to the perfect student who does not have the remaining three attributes and as a result, he's more productive when he's going to write the examination or when he's preparing. He's more confident when he's actually writing the examination or going for the interview. And as a result, he's more successful. Now, what are the three attributes that become barriers in our preparation? The first one is overconfidence combined with under stress. Aise log kitab kholte hi nahi hai. The biggest example is COVID-19 when we had almost six months to prepare for the examination of RBI or SEBI or NABAD. But very few of us actually took the time and took the pains to pick up the book and prepare. The second attribute is underconfidence combined with overstress. These are the people who are involved in overthinking. Now, overthinking is what happens? You have taken a book, the book is in front of you, but you are not able to study. आप हमेशा सोच रहे हो कि ये नहीं हुआ तो क्या होगा वट शुड आई बी डूइंग साइमल्टेनियसली शुड आई बी स्टार्टिंग दिस ऑल्सो दिस ऑल्सो आई डन एग्रीकल्चर बट ई एस आई इज लेफ्ट आई डन फाइनेंस बट एंटायर ई एस आई इज लेफ्ट एंटायर मैनेजमेंट इज लेफ्ट सो यू आर सो मच इन्वॉल्व इन वॉट यू हैव टू डू दैट यू स्टॉप फोकसिंग ऑन वॉट यू शुड बी डूइंग राइट नाउ एट द मोमेंट एंड द थर्ड एटीट्यूड इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ सेल्फ बिलीफ और लैक ऑफ सेल्फ बिलीफ These are the people who keep doubting themselves to such an extent that they stop believing in themselves. Our problems to have identified early. What are the solutions to these problems? Because without solutions, there is no point in discussing all these problems themselves. So, first of all, we take overstress combined with underconfidence. These are the people who are always overthinking. What are the solutions? There are three major solutions that I have identified. The first solution is to stop taking your life too seriously, to stop thinking about everything as an obligation or as a responsibility. Uh, you must have gone on a trip some or the other time with your friends or with your family. Aapne dekha hoga when you're driving or when you're in the car, there are some people in the car who are enjoying the journey. Bahut maza aa raha hai unko sab kuch dekhne mein. Kitne acche acche ped nikal rahe hain, vaadiyan nikal rahi hain. And there are some people who are always focused on the destination. Especially the parents, the father and the mother, they're always thinking, "Abhi 10 ghante bache hain pahunchne mein, abhi 200 kilometer aur hai, abhi 100 kilometer aur hai." They're always focused on getting to the destination, and in that process, they stop enjoying the journey itself. Aisi halat hamari bhi ho jati hai. We are also in the same situation. When we start thinking about everything from an obligation point of view, then we stop enjoying it. The same goes with your preparation for government examinations. focus on what you're studying today focus on what your targets are for today rather than thinking about what you should be doing tomorrow if you stop taking everything as an obligation if you stop taking everything as a responsibility and start focusing on learning and enjoying what you're doing right now the entire preparation of your examination will become something completely different the second major solution is is to stop multitasking for example i applied this in my own life and i have seen remarkable results in my own living as well for example uh, yesterday night i decided that today i will be talking to the students about stress about the problem of productivity and so my whole goal for today is focused on only this once i am done with this video with this discussion with you guys only then will i decide what to do next so my entire brain's activity my entire focus is completely on this one task and only upon completion of this one task will i think about the next task that i have to do the third major solution that you can apply in your life if you're dealing with overstress is to hit daily targets and at the same time attach certain purpose with your targets i'll give you an example to explain how to differentiate between an obligatory target and a purposeful target for example yesterday i wrote that one of the pending tasks that i have is to check english essays of students then i realized this is very obligatory thing to do i will never be able to do it with fun i will never be able to enjoy it so what do i do how do i write it in order to be able to uh, attach some kind of purpose and enjoy the process so i rewrote the target 
The target now says learn viewpoints of students on various topics concerning all of us. What have I done now? I have attached a purpose in the process of checking papers. The student is learning by writing the essay and sending it to me. And I am also learning equally by knowing about the viewpoints of students about various issues concerning all of us. So rewriting the targets that you have and not framing them as an obligation, but as something that attaches a purpose with your living will transform the way you view your targets. What is the second problem? The second problem was under stress combined with overconfidence. We see this, uh, all of us see this around us, especially if you differentiate between the people who have written the examination three, four times versus a person who's writing the examination for the first time. Aap dekhoge, that the purpose, the person who has written it three, four times will be overconfident. I know how to do it. I have reached the interview three times, four times. I will teach you how to do it. That is the perp that is the body language and his thought process. Now in that thought process, he stops understanding that there are some mistakes that he did. There is no critical analysis. Therefore, he's not able to identify his mistakes. And as a result, he's not able to clear the examination. And the second person who just started writing the examination is so underconfident. His body language is so weak that he starts believing in everything that the other person says. So what should be the solution for the person who is overconfident and under stress? The solution is very simple. Reality check. Ask yourself, where are you going wrong? Tell yourself, challenge yourself every day and give yourself targets so that you're able to be more self-critical of your failures and be more self-aware about yourself. How to do it? Mocks are the best way of doing it. Write mocks every day, challenge yourself every day and ask yourself, where are you going wrong? Why is it that I'm able to score only 205 out of 300? Why is it that even after four attempts, I'm not able to score 240 out of 300? Why is it that I'm still scoring about 70% and not 80%? Ask yourself, critically analyze your own performance. The third major attribute is lack of self-belief. Lack of self-belief Lack of self-belief comes from comparison. I see it every day on my telegram group. A student ne question pucha. A dusre student ne answer kiya. Tisre student ne answer kiya. Chothe student ne answer kiya. The fifth student answered it. And then there are hundreds of students who come plotting and say, we did not know the answer to this question. Does this mean that our preparation has gone in vain? Does this mean that we're not well prepared? There is a lot of self doubt. There is lack of self belief. You're comparing on every step with your competitors to such an extent that you stop believing in yourself. What is the solution? The solution is very simple here itself. Identify your strengths and weaknesses rather than focusing on others strengths and weaknesses. Rather than trying to pull the other person down, try to push yourself up. So identify where are you going wrong? Identify where are you going right? Correct the mistakes that you're making. Strengthen the strengths that you already have. And through that only you can improve your self belief and reduce the doubt and the comparisons that you're making in your life. Another major solution, if you feel that you have lack of self belief, is not to follow everyone else blindly. Make your own path, make your own study plan and follow it religiously. Do not follow others blindly to such an extent that you stop having your own identity, that you stop having your own belief system. It's very important to be able to chart out your own progress path. I'm very sure that these three major attributes will be able to help you minimize your mistakes and maximize your productivity so that you can be more successful in the least amount of time in the near future for the government examinations that you're preparing for. All the best guys. Take care.